hello and welcome back to my series of videos on the XS series from Synology. I say XS series, what I'm talking about today can apply to a lot of modern generation of Synology NASes. Simple question, what happens when you install a non-Synology drive in a Synology system that is only supposed to use Synology hard drives. We've talked about this before, and this is something that's been rolling out a lot more in the business and enterprise grade Synology NASes out there. We have started to see that a lot of their solutions, when you go to the compatibility list, much like the NAS we're talking about today, the DS3622XS Plus, that when you go to the compatibility list, we have a look, and what do we see? That only when we look at the hard drives, that when we scroll down, the only hard drives we are seeing are predominantly Synology owned. There's the odd exception, such as the WD here in the Ultrastar DC H310 series, which we're not going to be utilizing. But if we see there, immediately it becomes very, very apparent that these hard drives have to be Synology owned. They are Toshiba MG7, um, 8 or 9 series hard drives there and these hard drives are the ones that the system are only supposed to be used with and if you use drives that aren't on that list so long as you make it clear that you are using an unsupported configuration and therefore they can't support your warranty however a number of us still want to use our WDs we want to use Seagates we want to use Ultrastars and we want to know what happens when they are installed inside? Now, before we go any further, it is worth highlighting that there are exceptions to that rule. So, for example, if you have another Synology NAS system and you are migrating those drives over to your new Synology NAS, your new um, XS series, for example, Synology do state that they will still support your warranty if you're migrating from another system. And the same goes if you're using the migration tool or you're using that pulling over physically off those drives from one system to another. The same goes for a warranty repair as well on an older generation device where they've facilitated you with a newer generation system. They don't expect you to buy a whole pile of hard drives there on a warranty replacement. Um, that said, also the 20 and 21 series or any new 22 series boxes Although the older generation devices, we know that you can still use whatever hard drives um, you want. And by that, I mean that uh, the compatibility listings on the likes of the DS920 and stuff like that are still very, very full of all the other brands. We still haven't found out quite yet what the next generation of 22 series are going to involve. I don't think Synology would hard drive lock the likes of uh, a DS222 Plus or a DS922 Plus simply because... Those are more affordable generation devices and the tier they are aimed at are not going to buy Synology's own hard drives, which although are pro uh, enterprise series drives at a pro series price, and I do like the drives, um, I don't think they will ask people buying a two-bay to buy drives that are arguably noisier than most. Don't worry, this box is empty. Now, I've already booted the NAS, as we can see, and we look inside there, we've got two of Synology's own hard drives already installed. There's the HA5300s uh, there, already pre-installed, already good to go. And again, we can go to the listing there, and you can see they're on screen. They're 8 TB drives, a couple of them, and I've popped them in a RAID 1 environment there. This device does not support um, Synology Hybrid RAID. But because this system supports hot swapping, what we can do is we can install our third-party drive without powering the device down. Now, I don't know how well you can see that. This is a WD10TB uh, data center class HC330. Now, why have I selected this drive? Nice and simple. If I'd gone for a Seagate or a WD, it definitely wouldn't have been on the list. But because there is already an Ultra Star available on that list, I thought this is the closest drive I have got to that architecture. So what we're going to do is get this drive installed inside there. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and see what the Synology says. Can we assign it to a storage pool? Can we assign it to a volume? Will the system have any difficulties or arguments against us installing it? So let's bring this camera around as we make our way to the NAS. Hopefully you guys saw my segment on the memory upgrades. So here is the NAS. Let's bring that there. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly there on screen. I'm a bit far away from the mic, so I apologize if you can't quite hear me. There is our Western Digital Ultrastar drive. We're gonna slot it inside, plug it in, and we're gonna make our way back to the desk. Normally, hard drives take about at most 60 seconds to be recognized 
by the NAS themselves. And what we'll probably hear in a moment is a beep there in the background. And when we hear that beep, it means the drive has been uh, initialized. or well, not initialized, it's at least been seen. And then from there, we can go through the Synology's own storage manager to see what happens. As you can see, it's immediately stated there at the top right of the screen that this drive is not on the compatibility list from Synology. So it already knows this drive isn't on the compatibility listing there. If we make our way into the HDD and SSD monitor there, we can see that three drives have been listed. Drive one, drive two, and an unverified drive in three are Ultrastar drives there. So let's have a look at the information. Can we still see the same level of information? We've got the smart, We've got history, the usual diagnostic type stuff there. If we go for the unverified drive, as we can see, it's unverified. So it's going to make a very loud noise of saying that this drive is not verified or not accessible. But some of the other smart testing options are there. If we go into the manage of available drives, we're able to see if we can assign it to things, assign it as a hot spare and more. And of course, we've got the usual actions there of erasing and benchmarking and stuff like that. If we select the benchmark tool, we can see that I've not benchmarked this drive because I've only just installed it. But for now, next thing we're going to do is make our way into the overview section, sorry, the over to the storage option here. And then we're going to select that drive there, click create, and we're going to create ourselves a storage pool. So as you can see, it's letting us know what a storage pool is, why you need to do it before you create a volume and all the usual stuff. From there, we're going to click next. We're going to create a nice basic volume because it's only the one drive. We haven't got any kind of RAID configuration possible. It's only the one drive in our system. And then from there, we can see there is our 10 TB drive. So we can pull it over and pop it in there. From there, we can click next. And as you can see, once again, it is warning us that this is an unverified drive. Synology have really made a point of making it abundantly clear and st stuck as many big signs when installing non-Synology hard drives that what you are doing is installing an unofficial third-party drive. Um, so we'll go through it there into continue. From there, I'm not going to do a drive check for now. And we're going to go ahead and create our new OneDrive storage pool. That should erase the drive and create a new session of partitions on this drive internally. And boom, wow, that is aggressive. Um, the drive is being uh, listed as critical. That is quite scary. That's quite a big step there. Um, as we can see, that critical indeed isn't because the drive is broken. I'm sorry if my face is in the way there at the uh, bottom right of the screen there for you guys. But... It's stating that the storage pool contains one or more unverified drives using unverified drives may affect system reliability and stability. You can check the drive info to identify the unverified drives. Make sure to back update on the storage pool before removing it, blah, blah, blah. Basically, you are using uh, a bit of a moody drive. So let's go ahead now and create our storage pool. Um, our volume even. So let's create our volume. We're going to go ahead and use that basic pool there. Set it to maximum just for the hell of it. We're not going to be using this for too long. Make sure this is a BTRFS, a BTRFS pool for the hell of it. So let's go ahead and see if we can create our storage pool there. It looks like we can. And there is our storage pool being created there at the bottom of the screen. And again, as you can see, it's still not exactly happy that we're using a drive that isn't on the compatibility list there. And we've got that BTRS file system there. If we go into the file station application, there is that share that we've created earlier on on those other areas. So let's go ahead and maybe create ourselves a brand new shared folder. Is it going to be too soon? Let's have a look. No, it's allowing us to create a shared folder there. And I'm going to call this one Moody Share. Go for it there. Click Next. And it's allowing us to create our shared folder. So again, we can go ahead and create our usual kind of architecture of a drive on this NAS um, using a third-party non-Synology drive. But there's no avoiding that Synology have made it abundantly clear over and over again that you are using a drive that's on the unsupported list from them. They don't go as far as to say that this will affect your warranty from what I'm seeing here. But let's go ahead and see what some of those options are. So it's mentioning un incompatible and unverified. So as you can see, there are our resolutions there that is making pains to highlight. So Synology have taken the time to create a link and some detail for people to go through, but I still know this may be a slightly um, 
heavy-handed approach in uh, saying to people they're not able to use these drives. So again, there's still lots of different bits and bobs on there, and to what extent uh, Synology will not support uh, within the software level um, a third-party drive is going to be something we're going to have to see later on. But I'm going to wrap things up here in case you were wondering about installing non-Synology drives in your 2022 series Synology NAS that may have a more restrictive compatibility list depending on the unit you go for. Remember, not all Synology NASs have this restrictive compatibility here. Again, we have seen uh, more recent releases have that, but I do think it will be restricted to business and enterprise level products. But of course, time will tell. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, there is a third part in this series. We're going to be looking at PCIe upgrades on this system. What happens when we use non-Synology PCIe cards, such as budget 70, 80 quid 10G cards and higher. So do stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video, subscribe and the bell to be notified about future videos on this subject and use the free advice section linked in the description over on NAS Compares. Genuinely free advice, manned by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. We answer every email that we can and it's completely free. We don't do anything with your email. There's donate buttons. Use them, ignore them. It's up to you. I will see you next time.